All right. Of course, uh, there's some clips that I want us to run as we resume the conversation around uh, the county's cash crunch. I want us to listen to Governor Oparanya as well as uh, CS uh, Ukuriatani, who spoke sometime last week uh, talking about the situation that counties are facing. Listen. If the prevailing situation persists, effective 17 September 2020, counties will have no choice but to shut down. Therefore, all county government services will not be available in the counties. Consequently, we shall release all county employees to proceed on leave until a amicable solution on the issue is reached. In Treasury, our hands are completely tied. At the Division of Revenue, the National Assembly has actually uh, appropriated whatever amount of resources to the, uh, to the counties. And can only, the disbursement can only take place if the CARA, if Senate, makes a decision. And the fact that the Senate has not agreed, then we are likely to have a problem for a longer time. I know it's a recurring problem. Last year, the previous years, there are a number of, uh, you know, very acronymous uh, engagement, particularly at this time. I'm also aware that one time the Supreme Court made a decision uh, on how to go about it. But the decision of the Supreme Court was specific to the Division of Revenue. It was not on CARA. All right, uh, those are the um, two leaders of the helm. Of course, the one, uh, the chair of the governors, and the other one, the cabinet secretary in charge of um, uh, the national treasury. And I want to begin with you, Honorable Gladys Boss, of course, joins us by way of phone. Good morning. But listening to Good what morning. the two, right, yeah. li listening to what the two leaders are saying, and you knowing um, the provisions of the law, do you think we are at a time that, uh, just like Senator Kangata was saying, that uh, the national treasury can go ahead and release up to 50% of the funds based on last year's uh, County Allocation of Revenue uh, Act? Or do we need a special intervention to make that happen? Uh, I think the, the intervention should actually be made by Senate itself. Um, um, uh, I, don't, I don't think, I mean, what Kangata is saying is that he, as, as a whip, he has been defeated to manage to mobilize enough members to be concerned enough to save our county. I think uh, we don't have to circumvent the law. It's, it's an issue of, I have always said it's a leadership problem. I think it is not difficult to negotiate a resolution at Senate. If the leaders can speak to each other, and if there can be various consultations and meetings and persuasions, it will be able to happen. Right, I would go that route. Uh, and of rather course, than, rather than say that let, let them disperse fifty percent without the approval of the uh, Senate. Okay, and, and of course, um, all of you observers, because you don't sit at the Senate. But uh, for you, Honorable Wanga, uh, so. The Cabinet Secretary of the National Treasury sometimes last week indicated that they were sponsoring or they were looking at a way that the National Assembly can uh, allow them to go ahead and uh, disburse 50% of the funds. There are sections of senators that feel he's, he's just playing with the matter and not really uh, focusing on the truth. What do you think should be happening now? Well, uh, some in the past, we have had a vote on... Uh, when I think it was the last parliament mm -hmm. uh, uh, when we had a, a, a problem with the division of revenue for a while, mm -hmm. we in fact had to go to the Senate, went to the Supreme Court, that they had to be involved in the matter of the division of revenue, seeking an advisory. This was extended a long time, and we had to, and counties went on to an account. So I think uh, it should be possible for counties to begin to spend some money, even as this matter is resolved. I don't think this is a matter that you can say is a matter of the whip failing. It is a very emotive issue. Every county, um, every county wants to make sure they get the best for their counties, and therefore you cannot uh, blame the whip for this matter. It is a matter which the senators have to resolve. Um, they have to one way or the other vote on it, so that uh, we have a solution. But in the meantime, mm -hmm. that. It can be um, intervention to have the counties receive money on voting account. 
Oh, okay, and of course, uh, th that's what the stalemate uh, is with the um, senators and the national treasury not agreeing on what should happen. But for you, Governor Kabogo, having been at the helm of um, th that county, Kiambu, of course, you had the share of uh, challenges that you are facing with the national treasury or the exchequer delaying the releases to yourselves. And now the governors are saying that they are going to shut down operations. Is, is that could that be a reality, bearing in mind that in the third month of the first quarter, and no funds for this financial year have been released? Uh, again, that could be real, but also um, I'm twisting threats so mm -hmm. that uh, probably Treasury will do certain things. But, but I'm surprised, uh, you know, the CS Treasury was a governor. He understands the things that counties go through. Um, and again, this is a Kenyan problem where we want to wait uh, for things to be done at the last minute. Mm -hmm. What would it have taken to put a commission together? and the senators for a retreat, which they love to do very much, <laughs> and, and discuss this formula over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at what it is they are discussing, is about how to disburse 316 billion. I haven't had anyone asking the national government, why don't you see ground and release a little more money so that those counties that are bound to lose money because of the new formula are cushioned and and, and and life continues we cannot hold the country at ransom you know i listened to governor operanya saying we will shut down does he understand that shutting down means kenyans will suffer for not getting those services the water sector is devolved the health sector is a, a devolved function we have a pandemic now when they say they will send workers home that includes nurses you know, really, but, 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 some but they of are these saying, things, Governor, I, I do understand, and I do believe that it is possible to release a chunk of money on account. But why do we have to go through these things year in, year out? So, Governor, they are saying that already the services are grounded, bearing in mind that um, they don't have resources. In fact, Governor Paranya himself went ahead to even cite that even the health facilities do not, do not, do not have any more supplies remaining. So does it make any difference? Well, it does make a difference because the Treasury has the capacity to release money to counties on account. I mean, this is something the, the Senate would move quickly in the, on the floor of the House, that let's release money for recurrent expenditure because they cannot release money for development uh, expenditure, but recurrent mm -hmm. to pay nurses, to pay workers, essential services to, not to be interrupted. But you can see what is holding the Senate is not really the issue of formula because I've had senators say, no, we do not want to get more money in our county and, dis and, 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 and deny another county money. Who says that don't get money to my county? <laughs> you know, this is politics. This is politics. And, and the handshake, should, I, I would have imagined the handshake sorted this out because if you look at the number of uh, senators, the handshake side, the number of uh, uh, senators outside the handshake, you will see that there will be more on one side. But, but really, do we have to bring in politics in everything that we do in Kenya? I don't think so. I mean, it's fool's hard. Oh, honorable boss, so now, um, that disagreement on what needs to happen, um, Honorable Wanga says that um, there can be a window to have vote on account, money released on vote on account, but there's still that stalemate about the formula. But one wonders, three months into the financial year, and nobody has seen any urgency to release funds that should go to the counties, what does this say about how devolution is being handled, not just by those are the executive, but also those that are supposed to be protecting it at the Senate? Yeah, I, think, I, I think what uh, Governor Kabogo is saying that really, if you have the numbers from the handshake and the numbers from Jubilee, surely you should be able to move uh, any motion or, or decision in the Senate. So it, it shows you what this is. I think Kenya should be very sudden. It has shown that there is so much polarization mm -hmm. to the extent that we can't even agree on ensuring that we give services to the people who elected us. And and in, the, the, in fact, the, the intimidation of some of the, of the senators has, uh, is, is, what, is what has caused all this problem. Because this yeah. has never happened before. Yeah. In the eight years that Jubilee yeah. has been in office, there has been no government motion. 
a motion supported by the, the majority party that has failed ever, both in Senate and the, in, the, in, the, in the National Assembly. So right. it, it shows the extent to which there is so much distrust among the leadership. And I, and I think I agree that uh, they need to be a meeting. They need to be a retreat. I'm sure those, the, the senators are reasonable people. If they can be persuaded, they will agree. But don't intimidate them into making the decision. Persuasion is what can be able uh, to work. And even those counties who are losing, if they have assurances that, mm -hmm. uh, uh, that at some later stage, the challenges that they're having in their counties be looked into, they will be able to agree. So I, I think it's just a matter of that we are not talking to each other. We are not uh, putting uh, the Kenyan people first. And the leadership itself and, and, and is what... not use leveraging on their soft power to persuade their, their, their fellow leaders in the house. And Honorable Boss, I know you've been able to interact with them, parts of the formula so far. What, 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 what is your opinion? What should happen? Should we stick to the initial formula that ensures that nobody loses, or should we move to the new formula with the census of 2019, where population is a strong factor in determining how much money goes to each and every county? Or should we go the Team Kenya way that says that uh, let, let us not have anybody losing, let us uh, focus on the formula that has been? What's your opinion? I mean, my, my opinion is that there has to be a situation where at least a, the, the, the needs of each county is met. Mm -hmm. Because it's not about some people taking advantage. Remember the challenge that we had since independence is where they used to put money in what they called viable areas, mm -hmm. which was the former White Highlands, really. So eventually what ha and that inequality is what caused us to have the, the Commission for Revenue Allocation and to have devolution. So that each, so that no county is left behind. So we cannot go back to, uh, we cannot put a formula which leaves the other people behind. Mm -hmm. Because when you say you use population only, then what happens to those places that are uh, less populated? Are those uh, people lesser Kenyan? That is not the case. So it, it's about the, the, the percentage weight that is put on every factor. In other areas, you have to look at land mass as the factor. In other areas, you have to look at population. In other areas, you would have to look at urbanization. In other places, you have to look at uh, the, the, the uh, development focus. Others, mm -hmm. you might look at uh, the fiscal uh, uh, revenue, that, I mean, the, use the fiscal factor, which means how much revenue uh, a county brings in or resources into the country. So. It's not that any of those, you can, it's, they're not to be exclusive of each other. They okay. can actually, we all, all those factors can be utilized. So it's, it's just a percentage weight that you may find that if you're looking at an, a place that has a large geographical area but less population, right. so what you do, you use landmass. But if you have other places where you, you look at the population, then use the population factor in the calculation. But okay. I, it seems that people assume that you, you need to use one single percentage formula. Okay. Well, of course, we need, factor. We, 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 need to, to. we need so to yeah, exit. That's why it's a matter of agreeing and a matter of discussion. All right, matter of agreeing and discussion. We need to exit from this conversation, but not before I get your views, uh, Governor um, uh, Kabogo, on this. Of course, you've seen senators from your county uh, very defensive of the formula that would ensure that Kiambu and other counties nearby um, are able to gain more money, saying that uh, for a very long time uh, they have been disadvantaged, of course, not getting what is rightfully theirs. What do you think should be happening? You know, one thing, uh, uh, there's a very big discussion on the matter of formula and percentages. If you look at the first generation or the current formula that they've been using, mm -hmm. you will find that they gave weight of population 45%. Mm -hmm. And if you look at uh, the figures, the actual figures, given an example of between Kiambu and Tirukana, you will find Kiambu with a population of close to 2 million, mm -hmm. getting 8 billion shillings a year with a recurrent expenditure of 78%, mm -hmm. you know, towards 80, 82%, you will find that Kambu will never ever get money for development unless right. they raise their own funds. 
Whereas if you look at Tukana, you will find they were getting about 11 to 12 billion shillings with a workforce of about 400 million uh, a year. How really then do you say that uh, there is equitable share? I, I, I do agree that you cannot just say, let's use population as the only thing. Mm -hmm. But you should be able to improve population with its services to the people. For example, Nairobi, when you give 14 billion to Turkana and give 17 billion to Nairobi, mm -hmm. and knowing the number of people, for example, if you're talking about giving health, quality health uh, services, health is to the number of people. You know, nurse people ratio, doctor people ratio, you know, doctor patient ratio, availability of drugs in our hospital. You cannot use drugs, uh, you know, landmass as a measure of how much drugs you will give to You know, we need to use our common sense. And, and, and I'm not saying that uh, uh, countries should be reduced in terms of money that they receive. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the uh, control of budget uh, uh, last three years reports, right. you'll find there are countries that never manage to use uh, the entire amount of money that they get. But countries like Nyeri and Mombasa would hardly be able to pay wages. I mean, their salaries and wages for, for, for the year. Okay. Without any external funding, they would not survive, you know? And we did ask, uh, I think it was in 2014, for, for funds to be set aside, just as they did with the equalization fund, mm -hmm. to cushion those counties that would not survive without additional money. So let these senators go out there and engage the commission. I'm sure the commission is informed by certain uh, 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 um, good thoughts, okay. they put time into this thing. Why don't you just go and engage? And again, we are lucky that minister in charge of Treasury was mm -hmm. a governor. He should be able to understand. I mean, the first thing they should do right now is vote on sending money to the countries on account so that they do not grind to a halt. I'm surprised that Opanya has the audacity to stand there and tell us they will shut down. It's like shutting down it, 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 it's punishment to the national government. It is not punishment to anybody else. It is punishment to Kenya. To the people. So or if we have used the old formula, you will see that many countries continue to pray. And I have said time without enough. Why can't they ask the national government, Treasury, to see the percentage of money that left with the national government? Okay. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, 85% when 75% of services are devoted. Uh, Health, water, agriculture, those are the functions that, that uh, are most essential in the republic. All right, so Governor. Why is no one saying, in, at the Senate level, why is no one saying, mm -hmm. see some 200 billion and everything else will be fine if you use the new formula? It's not right that some countries will lose. Um, Money, if they got 8 billion last year, they should get 6 billion. That's okay. not fair. But also, it's uh -huh. not fair to continue marginalizing other counties with the pretense that uh, uh, they were, you know, can be marginalized completely. And when you tell us we are rich, you know, I don't you understand. Get into that. All, all, all right, Governor. Of course, um, this conversation continues. I wish you had uh, some extra minutes so that I can engage um, the Finance Committee Chair of the National Assembly. Uh, but we need to now focus on a different conversation, and that is about uh, the political antagonism that you're seeing in the country. Uh, the latest being some video clips, I'm sure some of you have been able to see, of uh, the Member of Parliament for Murua Dikir, that is Johanna Ngeno, and another one by the Member of Parliament for Kapseret, uh, of Wasingishu, where Gladys Boss uh, comes mm -hmm. from. Uh, but uh, yesterday, the member of parliament for Murua Dikiri, Johanna Ngeno, was arrested, taken to a Murua Dikiri police station. And we understand that later he was moved to Nakuru County, where uh, he, is, he understandably spent the night. Of course, uh, some of the sentiments that um, uh, he is accused of is inciting um, ethnic contempt, as well as incitement to violence. Um, so, of course, we cannot play that clip because of some of the language that was used in it. And I want to begin with you, Honorable Wanga. I know there is a lot of division that we are witnessing in, uh, politically in the country, but when leaders start to speak the way they did, what should we be reading from such kind of sentiments coming from leaders that really, uh, especially those that uh, won elections in, under the Jubilee Party? Uh, thank you, Sam. Uh, what I heard of uh, Murua Dikir and Pijo Adangeno and uh, Oscar Sudi 
And of course, you cannot speak of them in isolation of uh, the person they support, uh, Deputy President William Ruto. You know, the assumption that is made is that they have been sent to say that some of the very demeaning things that are said and incite things that are said. I think it reeks of huge desperation. It is unacceptable, especially bringing uh, mothers of you know, politicians, families of politicians. I had them speaking about. Mangina, for example, what, what does she have to do with uh, the politics of the day? So I think we must exercise restraint. There is no way we are going to be elected by insulting other people. If you want to be elected, you say what you're going to do for the people. But this uh, politics, you have left out the insults that Burkham has been throwing around, you know, on social media, calling people idiots and so on. It is an acceptable extent that especially supporters of the president have taken. In fact, what is assumed is they have been sent by the deputy president to make the sentiments that they are making. And, and what I would like to say is nobody is going to be wooed to vote for the deputy president just on the basis of the amount of insults that you can, can bandy or you can throw around. So the deputy president must actually rein in on uh, his supporters because the kind of insults that he's doing is unacceptable. I have also seen the insults they have thrown into the cabinet secretaries and so on. And, and, and this is most unfair. Mm -hmm. You know that a cabinet secretary is a civil servant and therefore cannot be responding to insults. Why don't you insult your fellow politicians rather than insult uh, uh, civil servants? And, and the whole political discussions around uh, cabinet secretaries as well. I have not had any saying that I want to run for presidency or I want to run this sort of thing. So okay. it is looking for opponents where there are no opponents shadow boxing, <laughs> and there must be an apology issued from uh, what Oscar Sudi and, and Johanna Ngeno, and this apology must come from none other than the deputy president himself for insulting... But, but Honorable Wanga, I, I, I want to refer you to a tweet that came from the deputy president last night, and he said that um, leaders should exercise restraint and avoid insults and bad language against other Kenyans, and summary words against mothers and head of state is a no-no. No amount of anger justifies use of offensive, insulting language. There exists decent ways to communicate however one feels. And I want to bring in Gladys Bose, but before I do so, let's listen into what C.S. Tobiko had to say that would appear to have uh, provoked um, uh, Johanna Ngeno, the MP for Emurua um, Dikiru. And thereafter, we will listen to what um, uh, one uh, Kipchuma Murkomen and David Morata said about the Jubilee situation. Under the Constitution, there is only one office that is recognized and that is the president of the Republic of Kenya. And that office is not vacant. All these premature campaigns, receiving of delegations, that effort should be the energy and the resources that are being expended for this purpose should be meaningfully utilized. If I met the president today, I'll look at him eye to eye and ask him, what is that one simple mistake that washes away all the good things William Ruto did for him from 2002 to winning the first election to a second election to a rerun? People go to church and they swear before man and before God to get married till death do you part. But people still divorce. These uh, arrangements, politics is dynamic. And if you started by behaving well and then you change your character along the way, Everybody has a right to change their mind about their position. All right, so Honorable Boss, you look at all those voices, and of course they're coming from uh, the situation that we saw from Emurua Dikir, Member of Parliament. I mean, what, what exactly are we dealing with for a party that really came to Kenyans and convinced them that uh, this is the party of the future? Three years down the line, you cannot see eye to eye, and now you can even see the conversation around divorce. Cabinet Secretary is saying that only the office of the President is recognized, the other one is a clerk. What are we dealing with? Uh, I think, first of all, uh, the statements that were first made by uh, uh, C.S. Tobiko were very unfortunate. Uh, I was disappointed because he is a lawyer of great repute. Uh, he's a senior counsel. And for him not to, be, to, to, de to degenerate to the point of speaking the way he spoke is wrong. And I'd also like to refer him to part two of our 
constitution. The title is the president and the deputy president. And then it sets out the functions of the president, the functions of the deputy president, and so on. So for a senior counsel to, be, to say that, uh, that the only office recognized in the law is that of the president is also unfortunate. But I do agree with uh, the statement by the deputy president mm -hmm. that uh, we must exercise restraint, um, uh, you know, and not get to the point of insult. I agree with him that, with that. And in fact, the restraint is more required of, uh, of the theaters, even more than politicians. It's a higher, they are at a different level because they're not uh, uh, politicians. So yes, I, I do agree, but uh, I was, I'm also surprised by the statement of Gladys Wanga, mm -hmm. because uh, when she has no moral authority to talk about insults, she herself has insulted Uhuru Kenyatta in unprintable words. Babu Owino of her party has insulted the mother of the, death of the president in unprintable words. Uh, Mili Odiambo of ODM has done the same, and so has Raila Odinga. So she, she has no moral authority to lecture anyone on insults. First, she should apologize. But the two the rights... She, 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 must, she cannot... She should, I want her to lead by example. Oh, okay, I'm, but, I, but, I'm going to ask, but I'm going to ask my colleagues that this, an apology is due. But I also expect her, because she's saying they must apologize. I want but her Honorable Boss, do two wrongs I'm make... To just a moment, Honorable Boss. Do two yes. wrongs make a right, knowing that... No, no, um, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying that two wrongs make a right, but I'm just, saying, I'm just commenting on the high moral ground mm -hmm. upon which she is speaking. Yet she is guilty. At least I can, I can be able to stand without fear of contradiction that I have never been abusive or shredded insults. I have made formal and factual criticism, but never insults. She is okay. guilty of having mentioned out uh, insults. So okay. yes, I don't agree with what uh, uh, the insults that, were, uh, that have been made by the, by the leaders. The leader. mm -hmm. I don't agree with it. I don't think it's right, and I've said as much to them, but uh, I, I, I can speak like that, but Gladys Wanga cannot. Okay, Honorable, Honorable Wanga will shortly respond to that because, of course, uh, there are some words that have been um, said about you. But uh, Honorable Kav Kabogo, you been, you've been a political leader for quite some time, a bit more experienced than some of the people that um, uh, we are seeing now making those sentiments against the president. But what have we come to as a country? And what do you think is the solution at a time that um, a political party comes into power, they cannot agree midstream, they have a lot of um, antagonism? What is the solution to ensure that you do not deteriorate to the levels that we are seeing now? You, that, know, you uh -huh. know, our biggest problem is hypocrisy. You know, I was just listening to both um, Boss and uh, Honor Bowanga. Uh -huh. and, and, and as she was talking about... Uh, um, the behavior of both Sudi and the LIMP. I was wondering whether she remembers what many of them did one day at the entrance of the National Assembly, just at the door. Mm -hmm. And many of them have been referred to by, by Honorable Sh Sh Sholane. Come and talk about Tobiko and his reputation as a good lawyer. I do not want to go there, but surely the sentiments that came from him, as Sholane is saying, you know, really, that is a sad situation. And I would tell the political leader, that is Honorable Raila Odinga, Honorable Uhuru Kenyatta, Honorable uh, William Ruto, pull back your dogs and put them back into the kennels and start talking as Kenyan. We cannot have a unified nation when you start talking about peace, handshake, and all these things during the day. And at night, what is your doing is polarizing the country. Uh, what you saw... Bobby, from Bobby, from Bobby, you know, what you saw from Wanda, uh, what you saw from this other MPs, what you're seeing now in Sudi and others. This is, this is a big mess. And I, and I spoke to one of them last night and I said, my friends, you need to rethink. You need to rethink where it is you want to take this country. Mm -hmm. And this country does not belong to Huru Kinyanta, Raila Odinga, and William Root. This country belongs to the 50 million Kenyans. Why is it that we cannot sit and speak with each other, speak to each other, not speak at each other? Why is it that we have this politics of 2022 is the problem that we have here? But nobody wants to speak about 
the politics of 2022. I, I feel terrible that the party that I helped form, because mm -hmm. I was in the center of Jubilee, Commission of Jubilee, I was on the table that put together TNA and URP. Mm -hmm. And now they cannot sit together. Why is it that they have to wash their dirty linen in public? None of them is clean. You know, and, 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 and if we start playing these blame games, we're going to light up fire in this country. And it is not them that are, are talking now will suffer. It is the common man that will suffer. But, but, you know, but, when you look at the likes of David Morade and what he's picking, mm -hmm. you know, you want to throw up. But such is politics. You know, it's, it's politics of defeat. And, and, and Go Governor true. Kabogo, so we are seeing trends that really are very consistent. I was looking at some clips of um, the period before 2012, looking at uh, the sittings of parliament that time when the former prime minister was the prime minister against the then member of parliament for Dorit North. Of course, the politics of antagonism was still present that time. They had fallen out. Now we have come to the second uh, season. We have the president and the deputy president fallen out and their troops following them. Has it reached a point that politicians are taking the Kenyans for a ride? And what is the solution uh, for the Mwananchi? And I want to put you into that group because you're not holding an elected of office of at the moment. They are taking us for a right because it is them that are fighting and creating tension in the country. When people are suffering, this is a time of the pandemic, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic. No one is talking about how many people are dying. No one is talking about these things. We're only hearing scandals, people are stealing, uh, you know, and, and I'm not saying that it is right not to think about uh, elections at this point in time, but it is wrong to go out campaigning and fighting about who becomes, who told you you will be there anyway? Uh, why is it that uh, people want to, to pretend? You know, I remember uh, uh, watching a clip the other day by James, the younger James or Echo is telling, I think it's that uh, uh, I'll tell you now here. You know, governments eat their own. And it seems like they're enjoying mm -hmm. when people are fighting. Why is it that this handshake is not extended to William Bruto and these people sit down? And if they cannot, we will kick them out, all of them. Kenya will move on without Daila, without uh, uh, William Bruto, and without Uhuru Kenyatta. Let them not think that this country belongs to them. Right, right. and of course, uh, Honabu Wanga, of course, you've been mentioned by... Um, Governor Kabogo, as well as Honorable Boss, I don't know what exp your explanation is because you're being cited as uh, having um, uttered sentiments. That I mean, you're saying we've mentioned her, uh, my friend. The clips are there, they're available. And not only her, I'm no. not saying about... Uh, oh, all right, one, Governor, one. let me just pose I'm the question to her. All these guys, they're very funny. All right, um, Honorable Wanga, what's your response? I, I don't know what to respond to, uh, Sam, because what I have said is it is wrong for Sudi to have brought in the mother, Sudi and Johanna Ngeno to have brought in the mother of the president into our politics. That is one. Agreed. It is unacceptable Agreed. for Sudi and Johanna Ngeno to have brought in the mother of the president to the politics of the day. The mm -hmm. mother of the president, Mamangina, has nothing to do with the politics of the day. And I want to challenge Kaboko and uh, Boss Chile to tell me when I ever brought in the mother of anybody or any politician into insults in the current in, 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 in politics. So I must first of all make that very clear. It is wrong for them to have brought in the mother of the president. And I and they should tell me when I have ever brought in the mother of any politician into politics. Secondly, they must tell me if if Johanna Ngeno, Oscar Sudi, and the person they support, the deputy president, are in the opposition. Are they in the opposition? Because the strange thing is they claim to be in Jubilee. They claim to be in the ruling party. When when some of us went into the when, when some of us were, you know, in, in, in opposition mode and so on, this is when we made this. So are they saying they are in the opposition? In which case they should sign officially and go into the opposition. Not okay. to say that it's also right for anybody, some Gituku. And some, let me say this. After the handshake, we all came clean and said there are some things we said that we are not proud of in, in, you know, in the heat of the, of the moment. Right, and and right. those same things were also said by our opponents on the other side.
and, and, know, and, and, that, that, and that's the question, Honorable Wanga, because yes, we've seen politicians say a lot of things. We even saw the Babu Owino situation. But recently when the president was um, releasing different uh, title deeds to the residents of Nairobi, we saw them shaking hands and taking uh, some photos there. And I want, for the sake of accountability on this show, I want to take you to a letter from the NCIC on the... Uh, in, in, in September of 2017, you had been summoned as having uttered some, some sentiments against the president. I will not read some of them because the, um, it's pretty unpalatable. But I think the question here is, yes, you may not have mentioned anybody's mother, but what do we do to politicians to ensure that, yes, you may react to the hate of the moment, but in a courteous way that does not really uh, incite the people to doing things that they're not supposed to be doing? Well, I think... Uh NCIC exists for that purpose, to ensure that politicians do not go overboard. And I also, I, I, I would like to uh, challenge them to, to move into the situation of, you know, both Oscar Sudi and Johanna Nyeno. But the thing is, when they say, come and arrest me, I am here, they also want to incite, you know, people to raise uh, tensions and, and so on. So that the care should also be taken that we are not raising tensions, and, and, and making it possible for people to right. come here for nothing. Okay, Honorable Boss, I'll give you the final word because you're out of time. Um, so now, yeah. what's the way forward, despite the, the fighting that we are seeing within uh, Cabinet and the Jubilee Administration? Uh, I think the way, the way I see, sometimes things have to get really bad before they can get better. So I think this will give an opportunity for us to reflect as politicians and ask ourselves, but how low have we sunk? We must change the way we conduct politics in Kenya. So it, 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 will, it will give us something to think about. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm very uh, happy when the, 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 with the tweet of the deputy president, because at least he... Ha so I do not want a situation where um, I think I had Gladys Wanga trying to drag his name in, but he was very clear. He distanced himself immediately from the sentiments of Oscar Sudi and of... Uh, Honorable uh, Nyeno. So let's not drag him into this. This is, uh, we, let us deal with the leaders who said what they said. Okay, all and right. Put him in. And so I think that his tweet was timely. I think it, it, it is an opportunity. He has spoken to us and, and, and said, you know, we shouldn't have a situation of insult. We should not be disrespectful and mm -hmm. so on. So at least our leader has been forthright about that. Okay. And I think people are going to... Uh, Interest, in, in, interesting in, in, how you put it. Our leader has been forthright about that. But uh, that's our time. Glad is boss. Is not their leader. Uh, <laughs> their, their leader is Deputy President William Ruto. And they, 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 they claim to be in Jubilee. And that is the insubordination that we are talking about. Okay. All right. Glad is Wanga. Uh, Glad is boss. Okay. And Governor I, I William Kabogo. Thank you so much for your time, for joining us on this conversation. We'll have more time to continue this, uh, but we just hope that um, at least the politics can be sanitized and have uh, really um, words that we can replicate on air, uh, despite the situation that we find ourselves in. We'll take a short break. On every time, you'll be speaking to the control of budget by the name Dr. Margaret Nyakango. And she'll be speaking to us about the county's cash crunch at the moment, telling us about uh, the facts and the fiction and what needs to happen as counties continue to struggle with not resources, but also how do they account for what they have and what they use. Back in a moment.